بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا سين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردن الرحمن بضر لا تغن عني شفاعتهم لا تغن عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون 
ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم لا الشمس ينبغي لها ان تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في الصور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون اصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون 
اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم, فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر, بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أسألك برحمتك التي وسعت كل شيء وبقوتك التي قارت بها كل شيء وخضع لها كل شيء وذل لها كل شيء وبجبروتك التي غلبت بها كل شيء وبعزتك التي لا يقوم لها شيء وبعظمتك التي ملأت كل شيء وبسلطانك الذي على كل شيء وبوجهك الباقي بعد فناء كل شيء وبأسمائك التي ملأت أركانا كل شيء وبعلمك الذي أحاط بكل شيء وبنور وجهك الذي يضاء له كل شيء يا نور يا قدوس يا أول الأولين ويا آخر الآخرين 
اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تمتك العصم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل النقم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تغير النعم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تحبس الدعاء اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل البلاء اللهم اغفر لي كل ذنب اذنبته وكل خطيئه اخطاتها اللهم اني اتقرب اليك بذكرك واستشفع بك الى نفسك واسالك بجودك ان تدنيني من قربك وان توزعني شكرك وأن تلهمني ذكرك اللهم إني أسألك سؤالا خاضع متذلل خاشع أن تسامحني وترحمني وتجعلني بقسمك راضيا قانعا وفي جميع الأحوال متواضعا اللهم وأسألك سؤال من اشتدت فاقته وأنزل بك عند الشدائد حاجته وعظم فيما عندك رغبته اللهم عظم سلطانك وعلى مكانك وخفيا مكرك وظهر أمرك وغلب قهر وجرت قدرتك ولا يمكن الفرار من حكومتك اللهم لا أجد لذنوبي غافرا ولا لقبائحي ساترا ولا لشيء من عملي القبيح بالحسن مبدلا غيرك لا اله الا انت سبحانك وبحمد ظلمت نفسي وتجرعت بجهلي وسكنت الى قديم ذكرك لي ومنك علي اللهم مولاي كم من قبيح سترته وكم من فادح من البلاء أقلت وكم من عثار وقيته وكم من مكروه دفعته وكم من ثناء جميل لست أهلا له نشرته اللهم عظم بلائي وأفرط بي سوء حالي وقصرت بي أعمالي وقعدت بي أغلالي وحبسني عن نفعي بعد أملي وخدعتني الدنيا بغرورها ونفسي بجنايتها ومطالي يا سيدي فأسألك بعزتك أن لا يحجب عنك دعائي سوء عملي وفعالي ولا تفضحني بخفي ما اطلعت علي من سري ولا تعاجلني بالعقوبة على ما عملت في خلواتي من سوء فعلي وإساءتي ودوام تفريطي وجهادتي وكثرة شهواتي وغفلتي وكن اللهم بعزتك لي في كل الأحوال رؤوفا وعلي في جميع الأمور عطوفا إلهي وربي من لي غيرك أسأله كشف ضري والنظر في أمري إلهي ومولاي أجريت علي حكما اتبعت فيه هوى نفسي 
ولم احترس في من تزيين عدو فغرني بما اهوى واسعد على ذلك القضاء فتجاوزت بما جرى علي من ذلك بعض حدود وخالفت بعض اوامرك فلك الحمد علي في جميع ذلك ولا حجة لي فيما جرى علي فيه قضاء وألزمني حكمك وبلاء وقد أتيتك يا إلهي بعد تقصيري وإسرافي على نفسي معتذرا نادما منكسرا مستقيلا مستغفرا منيبا مقرا مذعنا معترفا لو أجد مفرا مما كان مني ولو مفزعا توجه إلي في أمري غير قبولك عذري وإدخالك إياي في ساعة من رحمتك اللهم فاقبل عذري وارحم شدة ضري وفكني من شد وثاقي يا رب ارحم ضعف بدني ورقة جلدي ودقة عظمي يا من بدأ خلقي وذكري وتربيتي وبري وتغذيتي يا ابني لابتداء كرمك وسؤل في برك بي يا إلهي وسيدي وربي أتراك معذبي بنارك بعد توحيد وبعد من طوى علي قلبي من معرفتك ولن جابه لساني من ذكرك واعتقده ضميري من حبك وبعد صدق اعترافي ودعائي خوضعا لرجوبيتك هيهات أنت أكرم من أن تضيع من ربيت أو تبعد من أبنيته أو تشرد من آويته أو تسلم إلى البلاء من كفيته ورحمته وليت شعري يا سيدي وإلهي ومولى أن تسلط النور على وجوه خروة لعظمتك سوجدة وعلى ألسن نطقت بتوحيدك صادق وبشكرك مودحة وعلى قلوبنا اعترفت بإلهيتك محققا وعلى ضمائر حوت من العلم بك حتى صارت خاشعا وعلى جوارح سوت إلى أوطان تعبدك طائعة وأشارت باستغفارك مذعنا ما هكذا الظن بك ولا أخبرنا بفضلك يا كريم يا ربي وأنت تعلم ضعفي عن قليل من بلاء الدنيا وعقوباتها وما يجري فيها من المكاره على أهلها على أن ذلك بلاء ومكور قليل مكثم يسير بقاء قصير مدة فكيف احتمالي لبلاء الآخرة وجليل وقوع المكار فيها وهو بلاء تطول مدته ويضوم مقامه ولا يخفف عن أمره 
وجد لي بجودك واعطف علي بمجدك واحفظني برحمتك واجعل لساني بذكرك لهجا وقلبي بحبك متيما ومن علي بحسن إجابتك وأقلني عثرتي واغفر زلتي فإنك قضيت على عبادك بعبادتك وأمرتهم بدعائك وضمنت لهم الإجابة فإليك يا ربي نصبت وجهي وإليك يا ربي مددت يدي فبعزتك استجب لي دعائي وبلغني مناي ولا تقطع من فضلك رجائي واكفني شر الجن والإنس من أعدائي يا سريع الرضا اغفر لمن لا يملك الا الدعاء فانك فعال لما تشاء يوما اسمه دواء وذكره شفاء وطاعه غنى رحم الراس مالي الرجاء وسلاح البكاء يا سابغ النعم يا دافع النقم يا نور المستوحشين في الظلم يا عالما لا يعلم صل على محمد وآل محمد وفعل بي ما أنت أهله وصلى الله على رسوله والأئمة الميامين من أهله وسلغا تسليما كثيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل العقدة من لسان يفكه قولي الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد فوقاه الله سيئات ما مكروا آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد respected elders brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my congratulations to you on today, the night of Friday, as well as the 11th of the Qa'da, which is the wiladat of our 8th Imam, Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Rida alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. As such, as it is the wiladat of our Imam, inshallah we'll discuss a few of the affairs of our Imam uh, and, and point to some of the great significances of the impact of the imamat of this imam one of the ulama makes a point and he says that if you notice that the splits that exist amongst the followers of imam ali and the different sects that developed all developed before the advent of the eighth imam and the advent of the eighth imam was the point in which all of those who had varied and gone into different directions that were unified from the 8th Imam all the way through the door and the time of our 12th Imam Sahib al-Asri wa-Zaman Ajjal Allahu Ta'ala Farajahu al-Sharif Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad The time of our 8th Imam is a point of significant impact in the history of Islam Up until the time of our 7th Imam the Khulafa, whether they be of the Banu Umayyah or they be of the Banu Abbas 
had attempted to reduce and stifle the authority of the Ahlul Bayt by either trying to bring them into submission, as was done by Mal'oon Yazid against Imam Hussein in Karbala, or by imprisoning them, as done to our seventh Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al kadhim or threatening them in various ways to reduce their impact and reduce their role in society. However, Ma'mun al-Abbasi Mal'oon had decided to take a different approach with Imam al He had made a decision that he would try to control Imam al by bringing him into the public sphere and attaching his personality to the personality of Imam al And this door encompasses all of three years of the life of the Imam. It's not a very lengthy time period. However, the public exposure into the mass society of by being in close proximity to the Khalifa, the goal was of Ma'mun to give legitimacy to the Khilafat. However, what it did instead was, was it gave the position of true Ismat and Imamat a light in the audience of the entire world to demonstrate what the true authority of Allah on this world looks like. You see, as you read history and you read the tariq of the Ayyam alayhim as salam, the impact of Imam Radha is felt that when we talk about his son, Imam al Jawad, we talk about Imam al Hadi, Imam al Askhari, each of these Ayyam alayhim as salam after the door of Imam Radha are, are identified as Ibn al Radha, that these are the sons of Imam al Radha. That the mass of society that had been separated from the impact of the traditions of Wilayat of Amir al Mu'mineen and the personalities of Ahlul Bayt were reintroduced to the children of Rasulullah through the example of Imam Radha. And that introduction and the impact of the introduction of Imam Radha in society and reintroducing people to what the true children of Rasulullah look like for years, generations after that. People recognized the rest of the Imams by the fact that they were the children of Imam Radha. That if there was an example like Imam Radha, that this son, whether it be Imam Al Jawad, Imam Al Hadi, Imam Al Askari, was a reflection of that personality of Imam Radha that all of society learned about. We see, for example, and very briefly, we'll take a look at four arenas in which the impact of Imam Radha was felt. Whether we take a look at personal, theological, social, and political. And in these four realms, we'll see the impact of Imam Radha, that why his presence was something that changed society as a whole and brought back people to having yaqeen and certainty in the power and authority of the Ayyam alayhim salam and love of Ahlul Bayt. Very briefly, very quickly. When we take a look at, for example, the first of these four sections, the personal in terms of the personal development of the Imam and those who were exposed to the personality of the Imam, they saw the impact of his ibadat and his worship and his yaqeen in Allah. That the ibadat of the Imam, that those who had been separated from the example of the Ayyam alayhim one of the things that we see is in the travel from the city of Medina to the city of Khurasan, all those who were in the company of the Imam felt the impact of his personality, felt the impact of what one should be like when they are a worshipper of Allah, that they saw the consistency between the words and the actions of the Imam and the complete trust that the Imam placed within Allah. And from this we take a look and we see, for example, uh, there's the famous hadith of Imam Radha where he says, Al-Imanu Arba'atu Arkan that faith is placed on four fundamentals or four supports. At-tawakkul ala Allah wa ridha bi Allah. He says the first of these is to have satisfaction in the commands of Allah. And that the second is to have submission to His commandments. And then he continues, he says, wa taslima li amrillah wa tafweedha ila Allah. And then he continues and he says that the next is entrusting the affairs of the person with Allah and finally submission to the, uh, to the authority of Allah. These four points, right? Whether we take a look at <clears throat> trusting in Allah, satisfaction, submission, and entrusting, 
all point to the fact that a man should acknowledge the control that Allah has in his life. And that a man should be satisfied that when he has faith in Allah, that the one who created him has designated some affairs for him and that he should be satisfied in those affairs. And this is one of the reasons that we see the status of Imam Radha was that he was the embodiment of these characters of faith, which is why he became known as Ar-Ridha, one who is satisfied with what Allah has dictated for him. The Imam even continues, he says, <clears throat> that the true servant of Allah, the virtuous servant of Allah, is the one who says, That the one who is a true servant of Allah and who has faith in Allah and his completion and in the completion of Allah is the one who says, I entrust all of my affairs to Allah and I seek from him the protection of evil of what people have planned. That this is what the true faith of an Imam, this is what the Imam embodied in his personal characteristics. And that's the goal that we have. That when we want to have completion of faith, we look at the personality of the Imam and try to develop these four characteristics. Whether we say it's tawakkul ala Allah, to have submission and, and trusting in Allah, that whatever befalls us is from Allah and is for khair. The second is Rida bi qada illah, to be satisfied with whatever Allah has dictated for us, whether that be in a state of difficulty or whether that be in a state of ease, that we are satisfied with it. What tasliman li amrillah, and that we submit ourselves to His commandment. We don't fight against it, we don't frustrate with it, we don't imagine, ah, what if? This what if? is one of the scariest things that we do to ourselves. We get caught in this what if. What if I, I had gotten a perfect score on my test? What if I hadn't gotten a ticket for speeding? What if? What if? What if? What if? And we go and we lose our faith in Allah because we imagine that we were intended for something other than what Allah has dictated for us. You should be satisfied. It doesn't mean don't strive. But it means that upon the completion of your striving, accept, taslim, submit to what Allah has commanded and ordained for you. What tafweeth ilallah. And that to entrust your affairs to Allah. This entrusting of our affairs to Allah is to say that at a point when we have exhausted our efforts or that we have done good, Whatever comes of it, we are satisfied with it and that we know that Allah has placed some khair in this instead of constantly being frustrated. These actions show the completion of faith and iman and this is what people saw when they looked at the personality of Imam Radha. And we see this in Surah Al-Ghafir, verse number 40 and 40, uh, 44 and 45. Where it says, وَأُفَوِّذُ amari إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَسِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ That we entrust our affairs to Allah and surely Allah sees His servants. فَوَقَاءُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ And Allah is the one who protects him from the evil. مَا مَكَرُوا Of those who plan evil deeds against him. That these, this, these two verses, these verses here, Imam is teaching us that this is your faith. This is who you are. This is where you want to go, that you entrust your affairs to Allah and Allah is aware of your affairs and that He is the one who will protect you from the evil and the harm that is to come to you. Here we learn the personal aspect of the Imam and how he was teaching us through his personality and showed society through his personality what it means to have faith in Allah. The second aspect we take a look at is the theological aspect and the impact in theology that happened from the Imam. This covers a broad spectrum of interactions and a broad spectrum of points. Whether we take a look at the hadith of Silsilat al-Dhahab. Silsilat al-Dhahab is a very famous hadith which is known as the hadith of the golden chain. This hadith is one that the Imam conveys and teaches the people when he is traveling from Medina to Khurasan. And at one point in time the town gathers and they ask, teach us something, O grandson of the Prophet. And Imam gathers them all together and he says, I heard from my father who heard from his father who heard from his father who heard from Rasulullah, who heard from Jibra'il, who heard from Allah. 
This hadith is known as the golden chain because it originates from Allah and passes through the most honest and truthful people in all of creation to bring the message to society. And that this silsilat of dhahab and this golden chain gives the authentic authentication that the message is true and there can be no doubt in it. And in it says that Allah says, La ilaha illallah husni, wa man dakhala husni faqad amana min adabi. And Imam Radha teaches, he says, and he is correcting the theological aspects of the people. And he says that La ilaha illallah, to say that there is no God but Allah, is the fortress of Allah, and whoever enters the fortress of Allah is protected from his adab and punishment. The completion of this hadith is not always mentioned. However, in our authentic books, it is narrated that upon the completion of this statement, uh, Imam Radha continues, he says, بِشَرْتِهَا وَشَرُوتِهَا وَنَحْنُ مِنْ شُرُوتِهَا that the Imam explains, he says, the one who says La ilaha illallah enters the fortress of Allah and is protected from the adab of Allah, but the one who believes it and says it with understanding all of its conditions. And he says, we the Ahlul Bayt are from the conditions of belief in La ilaha illallah to protect you from hell. So in this way for the mu'mineen, he went through the process of protecting them and teaching them the impact and the importance of believing in Tawheed. And then he further elaborated in the acceptance and understanding of the position of Imam. From another aspect, we look at the theological impact of our 8th Imam. We see that our 8th Imam during his time in Khurasan, and as the Naib Khalifa of Ma'mun, was forced into many theological debates with many different personalities. And many of these debates have been preserved for us to learn from. There are such debates against, for example, the Catholics where he goes through and he discusses the origination of the Bible and proves to them that the Imam knows the Bible better than the Christians know it. And there are debates against atheists. There are de debates against the Jewish people. There are debates against philosophers of all these different ideologies. And the Imam shows his superiority in the intellectual capacity and the superiority of the lineage of Rasulullah in the court of Ma'mun. He even goes so far as that there's the discussion about, for example, who is it that is considered the family of Rasulullah? And there's a lengthy debate about this, where the scholars of the time said, we, the Ummah, are the children of Rasulullah, and we are the family of Rasulullah. And that the, 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 the children of Sayyidah Zahra have no significance in the Qur'an. And Imam al-Radha goes through and he explains, he says, okay, let me ask you something then. If you say... That when we talk about the family of Rasulullah, this means his ummah. Let me ask you then, when we say that sadaqa, is sadaqa permissible for Rasulullah and his children to take? And they said no. He says, but then is it permissible for the ummah of Rasulullah to take sadaqa? They said yes. So he said, here is the first divide in your ideology that the Ummah is the family of Rasulullah because the Ummah, it is permissible for them to take from Sadaqah, but for Rasulullah and his children, it is impermissible. Therefore, there has to be someone other than his Ummah meant when Rasulullah discusses his family. That this Itrati, this my family, my lineage, is someone other than the Ummah. Because the conditions upon the Ummah are different and the conditions upon the Itrat are different. In this way, the Imam again impacted the theology. We even see an instance where Ma'mun, in the hopes to somehow degrade the authority of the Imam, continued to place him in these debates to somehow figure out how do I destroy the authority and the personality and the image of this Imam that has been created. So people will look at me and see that my position of Khilafat is equal or greater than this Rada. Na'uz Billah. Would try in many ways to put the Imam in a difficult situation. Famously, he even set it up so that the Imam would have to debate in the middle of the night. In one instance, Ma'mun fills his court with many different theologians from many different faiths and brings them into his court and arrays them in the middle of the night and prepares them that now I will call Ar-Rida and you will debate him. 
And the hope was, was that as Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha was not prepared to debate and it was the middle of the night, that when they would awake him from his sleep, that he would be caught unaware and in a state of bewilderment, the others could attack him, and that Imam Radha would lose the debate. So when in the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night, the court is prepared, the enemies are ready, now Ma'mun takes one of his men and sends him to go get Ali ibn Musa. And he sends one of the supporters of Imam Radha to go get and collect Imam Radha to the court. When this man who loved Imam Radha comes and says, Ibn Rasulullah, Imam Radha, you've been summoned to the court of Ma'mun. Imam Radha sees his face and he says, you seem worried about something. And the man replies, yes, Ibn Rasulullah, I worry that Ma'mun is trying to disgrace you, disgrace you and that he may succeed. Imam Radha says, are you going to answer their questions or am I? He says, you are Ibn Rasulullah. Am I worried about this? Don't be worried about this. Rather, he says, Imam Radha says, watch the face of Ma'mun as I answer their questions. You will see the absolute dejection in the face of Ma'mun when he realizes that his plan to disgrace me has failed and there is no way for him to overcome me. In this way, Imam Radha showed and established the theological fundamentals that organized and told people and clarified the path of Haqq from all of the paths of batil. In this way, Imam Radha changed and gave more instruction and those instructions are available to us even today. We have books that are, for example, Ayun al-Akhbar al-Ridha, the source, the spring of knowledge that is come, or news that comes from Imam al-Radha, which is a two-volume book of many of the authentic narrations that took place in these three, four years that uh, Imam Radha was in the court of Ma'mun in terms of the education the Imam provided to the people of the time. The two other arenas that we want to take a look at, and, and again, in the theological, we could spend much time. There are many, many riwayat. And inshallah, if you have time, go and listen. And even so, for example, there are some of these that have been translated into English. For example, the debate between Imam al-Radha and the Christians is well translated by a number of people into English. And if you search for it, you should be able to find it easily online as well too. Ayun al-Akhbar al-Radha, uh, the spring or the source uh, of news or, in, or hadith from Imam al-Radha is a two-volume book that is also translated in English by a number of authors. A number of translators that you can find for free online as well too to learn about the statements and the teaching of Imam Radha and these variety of theological impacts that he had. The social impact that Imam Radha had was again by his leveraging of his position of authority how Imam Radha demonstrated and corrected some of the societal wrongs that were present. There's a few ways we can look at this. One, for example is in correcting the differences between society. We see that when Imam Radha was traveling uh, from Medina to Khurasan, that when the food would be laid out, Imam Radha would insist that everyone, the servants and the slaves, come and sit with him to eat. And when someone complained and they said, Ya Rasulullah, why do you allow the servants and the slaves to sit with you to eat? It's not appropriate for one of your status to sit with these people. Imam Radha rebukes him. He says, we are all the children of Adam. We all come from the same grandfather. We all share the same origination. It's not appropriate to try and show superiority to one by the degradation of another. That rather, the superiority of a person is done by his character, his akhlaq, not by who he sits and he eats with and who he avoids. Now, Amr Allah tried to create social unity and cohesion amongst the people. There are many instances where Imam Radha was seen as speaking to the servants kindly and fairly and treating them as equals and sitting with them. The same way his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In his famous narration of saying that there are some things that I will continue to do till the day that I die, one of those things was that I shall continue to sit and eat with the servants as an equal with them. This was the lesson and the embodiment that Imam Radha brought to bring back social unity and cohesion, to show humanity that there is no difference based upon color or status or class, that we are all equal and to treat each other equally and fairly. Another important place that we saw the impact of the Imam is a famous narration in which when the Imam returns to his house from a trip, 
he sees his servants working or he sees the, the servants of his house working, but he sees a man amongst them that he doesn't recognize. So he calls out to them and he says, who is this person? They said, this is someone who we hired today to help us complete the tasks that we had responsibility for today. So Imam Rada says, and what did you affix as his salary? And they replied, we'll give him something that he'll be satisfied with. He'll be happy with what we pay him. Imam Rada becomes visibly agitated and frustrated and upset. And one of his companions turns to him and he says, Ya ibn Rasulullah, why do I see you in a state of difficulty? Why do I see you being uncomfortable? Why are you making yourself upset? And Imam Rada replies to him, he says, I have again and again repeatedly given orders and instructed these people that they don't listen to me. That until the wages are fixed, do not take work and effort from anyone. First fix the wages of the person, then get the work done. Even if you, fix, if you have fixed the wages, you can give him something extra afterwards, but certainly make sure that you have an agreement with him and they are satisfied before they commit themselves to making an effort. This hadith, very famously, very appropriately, teaches us the etiquette of society and how it is that we have work done and how we should contract and build relations. Many times it happens, even till today, that for example, we say, oh yeah, well, what's the big deal? I'll just hire somebody or I'll get someone to work for me. But we don't affix the contract first. And this is a form of social injustice to say that I know better for you and I will give you that which you are satisfied with. Baba, if he was going to be satisfied, then affix the affair first. Establish it first to ensure that the person, when they are exerting their effort, that they know what their compensation is, that they are satisfied with it. Rather than at the end when their hopes have been set to something and you return to them with something else, it will be difficult to satisfy them. And at that point, if they are unhappy with the condition, then what will you do? Then you have done an injustice to a person. Both of these examples, and there's a repetition in these examples, of showing that the Imam was teaching society and culture what is the etiquette of Islam. What is the etiquette of, of dealing with people? Whether we take a look at it from his personal experience and showing how worship should be done and how trust in Allah should be placed, whether we take a look at it through his theological impact of teaching people the proper theology of Islam and defeating the false ideologies and the false mentalities that existed of the time, whether we take a look at his engagement of society as a whole, and his engagement of society as a whole was not limited to just these interactions. We see even, for example, that people and society itself submitted to the impact and the authority of the Imam. And we'll give an example of that at the end, inshallah. When we take a look and we see, for example, the political impact. You see, some people look at the life of Imam Rada as in conflict with the life of Imam Al-Husayn alayhi salam. The life of Imam al-Husayn at the end of his 10 years of Imamat, when Imam is approached by Yazid to submit to his authority, Imam refuses and says, one like me does not submit to one like you. And Imam refuses political allegiance to Yazid ibn Muawiyah. On the other hand, Imam Rada becomes the naib Khalifa, becomes the successor to the Khilafat. Rather, what we take a look at and we see that the impact of these two statements is not that they're in conflict, but rather that the situation varies. And one of the important things that we learn from this is that each situation requires a unique response. And it has to take into consideration all of the variables of the situation before a decision is made. Now, in the time of Imam Hussein, the giving of bay'ah and submitting to the authority of Yazid would have been authorizing the religious position within Yazid, which would have allowed Yazid to corrupt and defile the religion of Islam. Therefore, Imam Hussein had no option but to stand up and clarify to the people that one such as me, who worships Allah and is a, is a pious man, does not submit his religious authority to one such as Yazid ibn Mu'awiyah Mal'un. In the case of Imam Rada, Ma'mun had established his Khilafat already. And the question here was of the individual impact to Imam Rada. And in this case, when Ma'mun says, take the Khilafat from me, Imam Rada says, no, I don't want this politics. 
Ma'mun says then if you don't want to be the Khalifa instead of me, which he knew the Imam wouldn't accept because the conditions that would have come with it would have been the acceptance of the Khilafat of the Banu Abbas because on their authority, that would have given Imam Radha the Khilafat. That the Banu Abbas made him the Khalifa, therefore what the Banu Abbas did, it would have been righted through this action. So therefore Imam Radha would never accept that because he would never justify and legitimize the actions of the Banu Abbas who had killed many of the children of Sayyidah Zahra as well as ca caused great sedition and oppression in the land already. Ma'mun, knowing that Imam Radha won't accept this, he says, then you become my successor. And Imam Radha refuses. And Ma'mun eventually comes to the point, he says, there was a time when Umar ibn Khattab forced your grandfather Ali ibn Abi Talib to join Ashura. And if he didn't come to the conclusion of selecting a Khalifa from amongst them, that he would be killed. He says, I play, place the same condition on you that if you don't accept my offer of either becoming the Khalifa or becoming the Naib Khalifa, then I will have you killed. In this way, the Imam's refusal in no way is any more protecting the religion of Islam. Rather, his refusal at this point in time would be something that was seen as the pride and the arrogance of the Imam that he was not willing to protect his life for his own personal reasons. This is the way the politicians of the time would have painted the picture, and this is what history would have seen him as. So Imam Radha in return in his political impact says, I accept your position on the condition that I will neither appoint anyone nor will I remove anyone. Nor will I give any commands, nor will I issue any orders, nor will I give any legal rulings. I have nothing to do with your political involvement, and I am free of all of these things. And Ma'mun, thinking this is the perfect answer, says, I accept. Perfect. Excellent. Imam Radha abstains from all of the political involvements and is forced into a position of being the successor to the Khalifa but not one who approves and works with the politicians of the time or the Khilafat of the time to allow for these things to further in their injustice of society. Much of the same way we can take a look and we can learn these lessons that if there should be an oppressive government that we have to deal with, if we don't further its oppression, if we don't further its abuses, there is some legitimacy in the sense that we can exist and coexist in this realm. Therefore, the teachings of Imam Radha even explained and elaborated the dealing for the Shia of how to interact with society at this point in time. This is why the children of Imam Radha, Imam Jawad, Imam Al-Hadi, Imam Al-Askari, became known as Abna Al-Radha because Imam Radha, through all of these different facets of life, the theological, the personal, the political, the social, established the example of what it is that Allah wants from us and what it is that is the true message of Islam. Which is why we saw that, for example, when it came time to lead prayers for Eid, and Imam Radha comes out and begins the procession from his house to the masjid, that all of society was gathered in its pomp and in its status, and they see Imam Radha come into the streets with his shoes off, reciting the talbiyah of Allah, and they mirrored his example. All of society resonated with the truth of the message of Imam Radha. They resonated with the power of Imam Radha and of the sincerity and the truth of which they connected with Allah to the extent where Ma'mun was told that if ar radha leads the prayers on this day of Eid, understand that your Khilafat is finished. The Banu Abbas will be done. And Ma'mun had to stop Imam Radha from leading the prayers. This showed the societal impact, the political impact, the theological impact, and the personal impact of the personality of Imam Radha in society. On a day like today, our goal is to thank Allah for the blessing and the mercy of connecting us to the personality of Imam Radha. That in the history of Islam, if there had been times where people created confusion and doubt about who to follow and where the authority of Allah was on this earth, that Allah blessed us with an example like Imam Radha that corrected all of these mistakes and corrected us to indicate clearly that authority in Imam Radha came from his father before him and continued into his son after him and that we have been blessed that these doubts were removed from us from all of the aspects of the personality of Imam Radha who taught us what Allah wants from us. 
So therefore, we raise our hands in dua, nad'uka bismika al-azim al-a'zam, al-a'az al-ajal al-akram, ten times, Ya Allah, 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 Ya Mahmud bihaqqi Muhammad, Ya A'la bihaqqi Ali, Ya Fatir al-Samawati bihaqqi Fatima, يا محسن بحق الحسن يا قديم الأحسان بحق الحسين Oh Allah, first and foremost, thank you and thank you and alhamdulillah for blessing us with the bounty and the ni'mah of the ma'asumin and khususan Imam al-Radha. Oh Allah, connect us to Imam al-Radha and his shifa'a in dunya and in akhirah. Ya Allah, fulfill our hajat, protect our families, and give us khair in dunya and akhirah by the wasila of our ma'asum Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Radha. Oh Allah, like our Imam was one who had completion of faith by being radhi bil qadri wal qadha, make us amongst those who are satisfied with what you ordain for us and what passes over us. O oh Allah, keep our children and our families on the upright religion of Ali Muhammad. And O oh Allah, hasten the reappearance of the son of Imam al-Radha and make, his, make us from his upright supporters and followers. We ask that all of the mu'mineen recite one time Surah Fatiha, three times Surah Ikhlas, and give the thawab to Imam al-Radha on behalf of all of our marhumeen. Ya Allah, attach our marhumeen to the shifa of Imam Radha and attach us to the shifa of Imam Radha. With your loudest of salawat, ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إلهي عظم البلاء وبره الخفاء وانكشف الغطاء وانقطع الرجاء وضاقت الأرض ومنعت السماء وأنت المستعان وإليك المشتكى وعليك المعول في الشدة والرخاء اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وللعمر الذين برض علينا طاعتهم وعرفتنا بذلك منزلته ففرج عنا بحقهم فرجا عاجلا قريبا كلمح البصر هو أقرب يا محمد يا علي يا علي يا محمد اكفياني فإنكما كافيان وانصراني فإنكما ناصران يا مولانا يا صاحب الزمان الغوث 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 أدركني 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 الساعة 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 العجل 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 يا رحم الراحمين بحق محمد والي الطاهرين
السلام عليك يا وارث عدم صفوة الله السلام عليك يا وارث نوح النبي الله السلام عليك يا وارث إبراهيم خليل الله السلام عليك يا وارث موسى كليم الله السلام عليك يا وارث عيسى روح الله السلام عليك يا وارث محمد حبيب الله السلام عليك يا وارث أمير المؤمنين عليه السلام ولي الله السلام عليك يا ابن محمد المصطفى السلام عليك يا ابن علي المرتضى السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا ابن خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن الثار والوتر الموتور أشهد أنك قد قمت الصلاة وآتيت الزكاة وأمرت بالمعروف ونهيت عن المنكر وأطعت الله ورسوله حتى أتاك اليقين فلعن الله أمة قتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلمتك ولعن الله أمة سمعت بذلك فرضيت به يا مولاي يا با عبد الله أشهد أنك كنت نورا في الأصلاب الشامخة والأرحام المطهرة لم تنجسك الجاهلية بأنجاسها ولم تلبسك من مدل همات ثيابها وأشهد أنك من دعائم الدين وأركان المؤمنين وأشهد أنك الإمام البر التقي الرضي الزكي الهادي المهدي وأشهد أن العمة من ولدك كلمة التقوى وأعلام الهدى والعروة الوثقى والحجة على أهل الدنيا وأشهد الله وملائكته وأنبياءه ورسله أني بكم مؤمن وبإيابكم موقن بشرائع ديني وخواتيم عملي وقلبي لقلبكم سلم وأمري لأمركم متبع صلوات الله عليكم وعلى أرواحكم وعلى أجسادكم وعلى أجسامكم وعلى شاهدكم وعلى غائبكم وعلى ظاهركم وعلى باطنكم السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن نبي الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا ابن الحسين الشهيد السلام عليك أيها الشهيد السلام عليك أيها المظلوم 
ابن المظلوم لعن الله امه قتلتك ولعن الله امه ظلمتك ولعن الله امه سمعت بذلك فرضيت به السلام عليكم يا اولياء الله واحباه السلام عليكم يا اصفياء الله وودا السلام عليكم يا انصار دين الله السلام عليكم يا انصار رسول الله السلام عليكم يا انصار امير المؤمنين السلام عليكم يا انصار فاطمه سيدتي نساء العالمين السلام عليكم يا انصار ابي محمد الحسن بن علي الولي الزكي الناصر السلام عليكم يا انصار ابي عبد الله طابت الأرض التي فيها دفنتم وفزتم والله فوزا عظيما فيا ليتني كنت معكم فأفوز معكم السلام عليك يا أبا الفضل العباس بن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا ابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن اول القوم اسلاما واقدمهم ايمانا واقومهم بدين الله واحوطهم على الاسلام اشهد لقد نصحت لله ولرسوله وليخيك فنعم الاخ المواسي فلعن الله أمة قتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلمتك ولعن الله أمة استحلت منك المحارم وانتهكت حرمة الإسلام فنعم الصابر المجاهد المحامي الناصر والاخ الدافع عن اخيه المجيب الى طاعه ربه الراغب فيما زهد فيه غيره من الثواب الجزيل والثناء الجميل والحقك الله بدرجه ابائك في جنات النعيم السلام عليكم يا ساداتي وموالي يا جميع ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولاي يا غريب الغرباء السلام عليك يا معين الضعفاء والفقراء السلطان أبا الحسن علي بن موسى الرضا كن شفيعنا وشفيع والدينا في يوم الجزاء ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولاي يا حجة الله يا ابن الحسن يا صاحب الأس والزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن السلام عليك يا كعبة الإيمان السلام عليك يا إمام الإنس والجان 
عجل الله لك ما وعدك من النصر وظهور الأمر ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على محمد وآله